Hey everyone, I wanted to reiterate what we talked about at the end of today's class uh, while it was still fresh in our minds. So if you remember, there was this language that we had as a running example of strings which start with 0, 1. The last thing we talked about today was a space limitation on DFAs. And in particular, we were trying to prove that any DFA that accepted this language had to have at least four states. And if you remember, this overall strategy was to find four different strings such that no pair could reach the same state in a DFA accepting L. And in class, we actually saw the most important part of this. Two strings can't reach the same state in such a DFA if they're distinguishable. Now, let me remind you what I mean by distinguishable. There exists a string Y such that exactly one of x, i, y, and x, j, y is in L. Let me remind you quickly about what the contradiction was if this happened. Suppose that x, i, and x, j both ended up at a state. And then, since we're considering the strings x, i, y, and x, j, y, they followed the transitioned labeled with the letters of y and then ended up at some other state. Now this state over here, it couldn't be final, but it couldn't be non-final either because only one of x i y and x j y was in L. So this leads to a contradiction. Notice that in this case we have four different strings, so there's six possible pairs of strings. And so we would need to make an argument for distinguishability for each of the six pairs. We would need six little groups. Also, notice that this y, it can be different for different pairs. So once we pick a pair, we just need to show that, there's, that they're distinguishable, which means that there exists a y with this property. But if we pick a different pair, in order to show that that pair is distinguishable, we can pick a completely different y, and that's OK. So don't let yourself get confused by trying to use the same y for distinguishing all six pairs of strings, because chances are that actually won't work. So we saw in class that we could basically pick x1 to be the empty string, x2 to be 0, x3 to be 1, and x4 to be 0, 1. These corresponded to the four states of the DFA that we created in class, but there's actually another way of interpreting these. A more intuitive and helpful explanation is that each of these four strings is waiting for something different to decide whether or not it's in L. And actually, if you can understand what it is they're all waiting for, you can distinguish between any two very easily. So in this video, I'm not going to do all six pairs. I think I'll do two. So let's pick um, x2 and x3. So that is, we're trying to distinguish between 0 and 1. Now, it might be obvious to some of you right away what y should be. But in case it's not, let me try to use this intuition of waiting for something different. This 0 over here, it needs to know whether the next character is a 1 or not in order to decide whether it should be an L or not. But this 1, it doesn't care what the next character is. It already knows that it's not going to be in the language. So in fact, we know that this is definitely not in the language. So all we need to do is pick something that this is waiting for to see that, yes, it is in the language. That is, we can choose y to equal 1 here. And then it's not hard to see that x2, y is equal to 0, 1, which is an L. But x3, y is 1, 1. And it's not an L. And that's it. We've distinguished between x2 and x3, so these two strings have to reach different states. Let's do one more, just for fun. Let's pick x1 and x4. Let's pick x1 and x4. So this is equal to the empty string, and this is equal to 0, 1. Now, the reasoning here is a little bit different, because this 0, 1, 
no matter what comes later, what, no matter what comes after x4, it's going to be in the language. So when we look at what epsilon is waiting for, we can say, oh, well, it's waiting to see if the next two characters are going to be 0, 1. And we know that if the next two characters aren't 0, 1, then it's not going to be in the language. But that's not true for x4. And that's very helpful. So suppose the next two characters aren't 0, 1. Suppose they're 1, 1. Then x1 didn't get what it was waiting for. And so it's not an L. And so x1, y is not an L. On the other hand, x4, y, it wasn't waiting for anything. It knows that it's an L. And there's our proof of distinguishability between x1 and x4. So keep in mind that we really need to check six different pairs. But then once we do, we can conclude that all four of these strings have to reach different states in any DFA accepting the original language. And therefore, this language can't be accepted by a DFA with three or fewer states. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.